This needs to be taken into care because sometimes fertilizers get washed away due to excessive irrigation and are not fully absorbed by the plants. Flowing of excess fertilizer leads to water pollution. Continuous use of fertilizer can destroy the soil fertility because the organic matter in the soil is not replenished and the microorganisms in the soil are harmed by the use of fertilizer. Short-term benefits of fertilizer and long-term benefits of manure maintains the soil fertility and are considered to produce optimal yields in crop production. Organic farming is a farming with minimal or no use of chemicals such as fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides, etc. The system uses organic manures, recycled farm waste and biological agents to enhance the fertility of soil and for pest control. Organic farming helps in maintaining environment health by reducing the level of pollution. Organic farming promotes use of biofertilizers and biopesticides. Biofertilizers Organisms which enrich the soil with nutrients are called biofertilizers. Blue, green, algae and rhizobium that help in nitrogen fixation are biofertilizers. Biopesticides Naturally occurring substances, microorganisms and other biological agents that control pests are called biopesticides. Neem leaves or turmeric used for grain storage are biopesticides. Different cropping system like mixed cropping, intercropping and crop rotation prove beneficial in control of pests and insects. These also provide nutrients to the soil. Irrigation For the proper growth and large-scale production of crops, regular and adequate supply of water is essential. This supply is made through rainfall and irrigation. Due to the seasonal nature of rainfall, its irregularity and variability in amount, adequate supply of water is not available in all parts of the country. Poor monsoons also cause crop failure. To ensure that crops get water at the right growing stages, more and more land is being brought under irrigation. The process of supplying water for agriculture by means of canals, wells, reservoirs, tube wells, etc. is known as irrigation. Advantages of irrigation Irrigation has made it possible to bring the low rainfall and drought prone areas under economic cultivation. In the areas where rainfall is sufficient, and groundwater is also available, irrigation has raised the per hectare yield of crops. It has made possible the cultivation of more than one crop in a year in an assured manner. The various methods of irrigation are adopted in our country. Scientists have also developed many crop varieties that can tolerate drought conditions. Droughts occur because of irregular distribution or scarcity of rains. Droughts poses threat to farming areas which are dependent on rains and where farmers do not use any irrigation methods. Light soils have less water retention capacity and the crops grown in such soil get adversely affected by drought conditions. India has a highly varied climate and a wide variety of water resources. Different irrigation systems are adopted to supply water to agricultural land depending on the kind of water resources available. These include wells, canals, rivers and tanks. 
dug wells, water is collected from water bearing strata. Tube wells are constructed by setting down a pipe, penetrating through the soil deeply and pulling the water from the deeper strata. From both these wells, water is lifted by pumps for irrigation. Canal irrigation In India, irrigation on extensive areas is carried out with the help of canals. The main canal receives water from different sources like reservoirs or rivers and is branched further for irrigation. River lift system. In areas where canal flow is insufficient or irregular due to inadequate reservoir release, the lift system is more rational measure. In this system, water is directly drawn from the rivers for irrigation by pumps. Tanks. Tanks are small storage reservoirs which intercept and store the water from smaller catchment areas. Rainwater harvesting and watershed management are fresh initiatives for increasing the water available for agriculture. Construction of small check dams increases the level of groundwater. The check dams stop the rainwater from flowing and reduces the soil erosion. Cropping pattern. A variety of cropping patterns are adopted for growing crops to achieve maximum benefit. Commonly practiced cropping systems are mixed cropping systems, intercropping systems, and crop rotation practices. Mixed cropping or multiple cropping. Mixed cropping is the practice of growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same piece of land. It is also known as multiple cropping. This type of cropping leads to an improvement in the fertility of the soil and hence increase in crop yield. The two selected crops grow simultaneously supporting each other. Mixed cropping is an advantage against crop failure due to abnormal conditions like climatic conditions, attack of diseases, etc. Some successful mixed cropping practices are soya bean and pigeon pea, maize and udar dal or black gram, groundnut and sunflower, sorghum and pigeon pea, wheat and gram. Intercropping Intercropping refers to growing more than one crop in the same land area in rows of definite proportion and pattern. A few rows of one crop alternate with a few rows of the second crop. The crops selected are such that their nutrient requirements are different. The goal of intercropping is to produce a greater yield on a given piece of land by making use of resources that would otherwise not be utilized by a single crop. Some successful intercropping practices are Baja and cow bean, cotton and moon bean, soya bean and maize. Crop rotation Growing one type of crop continuously in the same piece of land for years together result in depletion of land's fertility due to nutrient deficiencies and increase in disease in crops. Therefore, the rotation of crops is absolutely essential. Crop rotation is a process of growing different crops in succession on a piece of land in a specific period of time with an object to get maximum profit from least investment without impairing the fertility of soil. The sequence of crop rotation may be seasonal or year-wise. The availability of moisture and irrigation facilities decide the choice of crop to be cultivated after one harvest. If crop rotation is done properly, 
that more than two crops can be grown in a year with good harvest. Let's do a quick check. Responsible for damage during storage include 
insects, certain worms and microbes, that is bacteria and fungus, and action of enzymes. Abiotic factors. Abiotic factors include temperature, moisture content of the food, and humidity of the surroundings. These factors cause quality degradation, weight loss, poor germability, and discoloration leading to poor marketability. These factors can be prevented by proper treatment and by systematic management of warehouses. Control measures are used before the grains are stored for future use. These preventive measures include cleaning of produce before storage, drying the food grains first in sunlight and then in shade. Fumigation and using chemicals are ways to kill pests. Let's do a quick check. Crop Protection Management